This box contains a low pass filter for audio. Uh, actually two filters, one for I and one for Q. Uh, there are two inputs, a high level input and a low level input. This is how it looks inside. And it looks complicated, uh, but it isn't. It is a trivial design. This is the audio low pass filter. There are two of them, one for I and one for Q. There is a high level input here. Uh, two resistors make the voltage here, 50% of the voltage here. At this point there is a low level input, depending on what sound card we are using. The DC level is VCC divided by 2. VCC, that is 12 volts or something like that. Uh, the first op-amp is just to define the impedance here. Then there is a cell and K topology. Uh, this thing and with also this voltage divider. And this and that, that's the cell and K. And then an RC link to compensate for the small overshoot of the cell and K filter. And then electrolytic capacitor to go back from VCC divided by 2 to ground potential. And then a potentiometer to set the output level to fit the soft rock. Here is an output for the pilot tone. This is how the pilot tone is filtered out. There are two of them, one from I and one from Q, and they are in antiphase. So this is a differential amplifier uh, with a high pass characteristics. And then there is a cell and K filter uh, with uh, high pass characteristics and a cut off something around uh, 40 kilohertz or so. And the output here, I labeled it pilot sum. And the VCC divided by 2 comes from this voltage divider. Both of the resistors are the same, 4.7K, of course. And the pilot sum, that is a weak signal, so it is amplified. Uh, there is some low pass filtering and some high pass filtering. So together this is a band pass. And then there is one more to bring up the level a little bit. And here the output is pilot filtered. And it comes in here and there is a gain control. And then again some amplification. And there is a capacitor across here, 33 PF, I forgot to put it in the diagram. Uh, then there is a diode and this is just an inverter to create a push-pull signal here and here, and it's rectified, and out is pilot DC, uh, which is a little bit filtered, and then uh, it goes into an amplifier, which is used as a comparator. And then, finally, there is a transistor with an open collector, so the output can be connected to the PTT of the soft rock. These are the keying waveforms. Uh, the upper track is the RF output, and the middle track is the uh, signal from the pilot tone, and the bottom is from the PTT using USB. And it's clear that the precision of the USB signal is a little bit questionable. Uh, it has a time jitter of about plus minus five milliseconds. And that is okay for QSK, but not for a radar application. Then one needs much tighter, and the pilot tone uh, provides that. I'm using the lower of these generators running at 11 Hz to key on off uh, the audio tone at 38 kilohertz. Uh, and it looks like this. The Apple track on this oscilloscope. 
So they are fairly short pulses and they repeat at 11 Hertz. Uh, the output from the soft rock is the upper truck here and uh, PTT control is by the pilot tone and you can see that the switching happens about 370 microseconds uh, after uh, the power has been reduced to virtually zero. The spectrum of this transmission, the power is 1 watt looks like you can see here. The signal is on 7 megahertz. Uh, peak power is 0 dBm. The S meter is properly calibrated here. Uh, if I look at the signal level, it now says 7. So I move, uh, let's say, 20 kilohertz away and here the keying clicks are about 100 decibels attenuated and this is in uh, a bandwidth of 500 hertz and you can see the noise floor is roughly this level if I go 100 kilohertz away here there are uh, noise bursts at 110 dB uh, below the carrier. If I press the manual key, now we have continuous power, and then you can see this is where the noise floor is. There are a couple of spurs, they are very weak. Uh, I can try to find one of them. Here is probably the strongest one. And I press the key. You can see it's suppressed by about 100 decibels. So, uh, running under these conditions, the soft rock is an excellent, very pure transmitter. So this is the Linrad screen uh, running the Softrock Ensemble as uh, a transceiver with QSK. Uh, Kying is with a 38 kilohertz tone into the microphone input because that's the mode for fast keying uh, without jitter. Uh, I'm listening about 20 kilohertz away from the uh, transmitted signal which is close to the center that's to eliminate the spurs from mirror image and carrier leak through uh, the receive side is not so favorable the bottom track here is the loudspeaker output and you can see it's delayed by about 30 milliseconds and we have one switch transient uh, well, here, associated with switching on PTT, and then another one with the same delay here, associated with switching off PTT. The problem with this is when I increase the, sig the gain to be able to hear weak signals, At this point, we can see that the duration of the switching transient is this time, it's about 4 milliseconds. It means that after having switched off the transmitter, we have to wait 4 milliseconds before any echo can be heard means that this isn't very useful uh, for distances below, uh, what could it be, uh, 1,500 kilometers or so. So it might be fun on HF, but when used as an exciter for two meters, it's not so fun because aurora and other things often happen at closer distances. 
but we can solve this by adding a second soft rock uh, and that is a good idea anyway because we want to receive uh, something like 20 kilohertz away uh, from the local oscillator so we need two soft rocks having different local oscillators and then switching could be arranged without switch transients. 